You're worthy, Lord God. Hey. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Come on, saints. Stand up. If you will, before the Lord. We're going to remember that he's a wonder in our soul. Amen. Give him the glory this morning. He's worthy. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's been so good. He's been so good in the midst of trials and tribulations. He has been so good. He's the only consistent one in our lives. How many of you agree with that? He is consistent. That is our God. He's a mighty God, an awesome God. Keeps his promises each and every day. All of his promises are yea and amen to his glory. And this morning, we just thank him. 
We thank you, Lord God, for this opportunity just to come before you, to worship you in spirit and in truth, to lie down before you, to lift our hands before you, and to glorify your awesome and matchless name. Amen. Good morning, good morning, and good morning. And welcome to the Cross Culture Church. And all of you on live stream, on um, Facebook Live, we welcome you as well. We want to say thank you for joining us this morning to coming out. You know, when I was, as I was coming in this morning and I was just looking all around, the birds were singing, the trees were waving, I was breathing and alive, and all I could do is say, thank you, Jesus, for this, another opportunity, another opportunity to see what you're doing in our lives. For some of us, we're going through some trials and tribulations, but just be aware that God knows your situation and he knows what's best and he will deliver you out of them all. That was his promise and that's what we stand upon this morning. So this morning, because of the fact we can't really see each other's faces, what I want you to do is just lift up your hand and just do like this and that's saying, okay, I'm smiling, I'm smiling. And you on the broadcast, you that are watching the broadcast, just lift your hand and just wave them like this and say, I'm smiling. I'm smiling because the joy of the Lord is our strength this morning. It is our strength. So this morning, even though we're going through the COVID-19 issues and things are kind of lightening up a little bit, God is still consistent. God is still in control. And he has us right where he wants us to be, correcting us, rebuking us at times but yet loving upon us with a never-ending love. So right now, we're going to continue to worship as our worship team just blesses us this morning and blesses the Lord. Amen? Amen. Amen. Come on, children.
my God. Here in the power of Christ, I stand. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your presence, oh God. Thank you for your power working in us to make us, <laughs> to form us, to keep us, to send us. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that we stand in your power. It's you that's raised us, hallelujah, from a low place. And we give you glory today. We give you honor, hallelujah. All the credit goes to God. Amen. All credit goes to God. Every good thing about you, the credit goes to God. Anything that's noteworthy about you, the credit goes to God. The scripture says that every good and perfect gift comes from him. Look, a father of lights of whom there is no variableness or shadow of turning. So anything that you can find in yourself that you go, that's not bad. Some of y'all look at yourselves in the mirror this morning and said, man, I, I think I look all right. Some of y'all walked out and you, you looked at your house and you were pleased. You got in your car, you go, thank you, Jesus. No, some of you have talents, skills, and abilities. Listen, all that you have, God gets all the glory. He gets all the glory. He gets all the glory. Now the question is, are we going to give it to him? Are we going to give it to him? Let's give him, you know how in the Old Testament they had all these different kind of offerings, the praise offering, the wave, the wave offering, the grain offering. Let's give him an offering of praise for all the good things. Come on, let's give it from everything in your life that's good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, I'm standing up on two feet this morning. Hallelujah. I have sight in my eyes, oh God. I can hear. Lord, I can walk. I can clap my hands. I give you praise, oh God. Hallelujah. 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 There's none like you, Jesus. None like you, Lord. None like you, Lord. No one, no one can bear you. Hallelujah. You're the great I am. You're El Shaddai. You're the all-western one. Hallelujah. King of kings. Lord of lords. Hallelujah. I am that I am. Lord, we bless you. We magnify you. We extol you. We exalt you, oh God. Wonderful Savior. Wonderful Savior. Wonderful Savior. Glorious God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but my hallelujah start going back. I couldn't just thank him for what's happening right now. Jesus. But my hallelujah start going back to my beginnings. You know, thank God for the family I was born into, for my experiences. And, and listen, even if that wasn't the best situation, let me talk to you about your beginnings. In Jeremiah, God says that before you were even born, before you were formed, while you were still in the womb, he said, I knew you. And I didn't just know you. He said, I had already separated you for the work that I called you to. Come on. His goodness precedes your arrival on this earth. How can you exhaust that praise? We bless the Lord. Hallelujah. That he saw us down through the annals of time. He knew everything you was going to face, everything that was going to come your way, and he already made a way for you to get through it. And what the devil meant for evil, he already purposed that it was going to work for good. It's going to work for our good. What came to break us is actually making us. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody says nothing too hard for God. Nothing too hard for God. Hallelujah. Emily, would you come down, please? Hallelujah. He's a good God. Nothing's too hard for him. No matter where we are in life, no matter what we go through, he's a faithful God. And he knows how to take what should have destroyed you, should have made you depressed, you should have lost your mind. But God used that somehow to raise you up. In fact, the intent of it was to crush you down. 
but God says what's pressing down on you is going to launch you. If we can see it from his perspective, he will launch us. Hallelujah. I asked Emily to come down here because I wanted to announce for those that have not heard that last night her brother, Eldrin, went home to be with the Lord. I'm sorry. Everybody looked at me real sad. I didn't say he died. I said he went home to be with the Lord. See, that was a test for us. We can't separate. He can't be God Almighty, wonderful Savior, deliverer, healer. He can't be all of that if we celebrate him. And then when we announce that he brought one to his home, we just, do you know that's what this is all about? You, we hope that we make it where Eldrin is. I, I pray you hope that. Amen. He's made it in. After a long battle with sickness, he stayed faithful to the end. I had, a prayer, I had an opportunity. Emily called me. I had an opportunity to pray with Eldrin on today is Sunday, Friday. And uh, he was saying amen. And he was in agreement as we acknowledged the Lord. He was in his right mind, even with the pain. He still believed and was still faithful to God. And then on yesterday, Pastor Walker had a chance to pray with him and Emily and the whole family. And as Pastor prayed, I sat there and listened to this man of God speaking with such authority from such a place of oversight. I said, God, that's a good thing. But that good thing came from you. So today, we can't, we can't do what we normally do. Right now, we want to bum rush you and put our hands all over you. Somebody might do that later, but I am not going to have it in here today, right now. Amen. But what we want to do is tell you that we love you, Emily. And you are not walking through this alone. You, we, look around. We got a whole family. It is not just the folk you see here, those in the parking lot, those online worshiping with us. We stand with you. We know that his grace is sufficient. We're not ignorant of the fact that you um, celebrated your mom's life not many months ago. And now your brother. But he is a faithful guy. And what the enemy is thinking, he going to work this thing to bring Emily down, is about to propel you into a new place in God. Yes, you're going to grieve, but not as those who don't have hope. Amen. The strength of the Lord be yours in Jesus' name. Family, would you just hug, give an air hug, and, and send strength and love and peace and encouragement to her and the family. And Father, we lift up, Emily, we lift up the entire family right now, and we pray that you would take them in your arms. Let them know, God, that in times like this, you're not far, but you're actually near. You're closer now than ever before. And may they experience your nearness. May they be aware of your nearness. Comfort them, Lord, like only you can. And we commit them to you because we know that in your arms they're safe. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. We love you, sis. Amen. Come on, give the Lord a hand, praise. You may be seated. Thank you, praise team, for that worship this morning. Yes, sir. Thank you so much, Damien, for us playing them drums. I don't think it was a tom left untouched, you know. And I heard Janet do a run. She caught white keys, black keys, gray keys. She was all over the place. And then Noah filling the bottom over there with chords and I don't know what all he was playing, but I just know it filled it out. You guys did it was such a blessing. Didn't you enjoy the presence of God in our worship this morning? And I'm excited because I feel like the Lord is already doing what I hoped and believe he would today. So thankful to have my family here with me, popping up, not telling me they coming, just surprising me, showing up in this place. Uh, my, my, my sister, Peaches, and my new high school graduate nephew, Makai. Amen. 
of course, my son, Donnie, and my daughter, Brad, and, uh, and, and I'm sure other families watching online, and my wife is somewhere in the parking lot. If she would toot that, I won't hear. But I love you, baby. Thank you for all your support. And uh, we just appreciate the church family. I look out, you know, these are the people that are in my household. But man, when I say family, and I look around this place, and I see the faces, man, this is family. I love this, this congregation. I love the people of God. I love you so much. I mean, some of you have been in my life, and we've been in a relationship for so many years now, it's hard to even, it's hard to even count. You know, I look at Miss Gray. Oh, my God, she pretty much raised Donovan, you know, and he's my, my eldest son. I look around at Charlotte. Well, she was here when I got here, you know. Just, you know, just looking at the faces, and there's so many of you that came in at different times. I remember when Doug was in diapers. Well, he wasn't in diapers. I'm just messing with it. But he was a young man. And uh, just thank God for the family of God. You know, you guys are. And, then, you know, that's something we learn about God from walking with him all these years and walking with each other in these relationships, you know. And um, I don't take it lightly when I get an opportunity to stand before you and share the word of God. Uh, I respect you as a people. You guys are so mature. I was thinking about Wednesday night as Brother Willie Torrey was sharing his comments and, you know, and Comas was sharing his comments on the Wednesday night service. And, you know, I look at, look at just how I'm looking over here at this praise team and looking at, she used to be Nikki, but now Deborah, you know, <laughs> Renata, Max, how they've matured in the things of God and just the maturity. And I said, Lord, these people, um, they're, not, they're not just your average bunch. You know, we got, look, we got Barbara Walker back there is now author, you know, preacher extraordinaire. Look at the people of God. Look at what God has, has done and is doing in us. And I said, Lord, thank you so much for our pastor who gives us such a rich, mature diet in the Word of God. And y'all can be intimidating. That's, that's the point I'm making. You know, when you think about how much revelation is contained just within these that are gathered here, and I can't even uh, comment on those that's watching and observing through live stream and in the parking lot, but just the collective maturity of this body. I was, in fact, I told my wife, I said, you know, I bet you I could take about six or seven, eight, maybe ten of our core leaders and stick them anywhere and they can bring a relevant word. You can't go in a lot of churches and say that. And then for going past the core leadership, what some folk would just call our average member. God has done a great work. God has done a great work. If you don't believe it, sit down and have a conversation with a kin. Sit down and talk with Carmel. You know, let Betty pray with you. Get confused and go to Domingo. What God has raised up in this house is incredible. I'm sitting here talking, I'm looking at Angela, and please, you know, don't think that because she serves the first lady that she can't talk and that's all she can do. Let me tell you something. I keep saying, Lord, it, that's not a waste, is it? She's got so much, but she humbles herself and serves, but she's carrying, she's carrying a treasure. So many of you have grown from the word that's been delivered, and it's obvious. Um, so that in mind, I said, well, Lord, what is it, what is my assignment today? And I believe the Lord wants me to give you uh, an admonition, and uh, admonish you, exhort you in an area 
that's particularly targeted to you. You first, the church, and the church ain't everybody who's a member. The church are those, is those who are following the Lord, the called out ones who are submitted their lives and surrendered. And then, and, and some are here today, some, many are not. And it's not just those that's a, a part of the church or the ministry here at 6440 Rock Springs Road, Lithonia, Georgia, now Stonecrest, Georgia, 10 a.m. on Sunday morning. I'm just saying that for those that's watching in case they want to get here. Um, but God has been showing himself strong in our lives and uh, <laughs> I have to believe and I know that the reason you're still walking with him is because you've tasted. You know, the scripture says, taste and see that the Lord is good. You've tasted and seen that he is good. You know, you've been delivered more times than you can count. Right? Danger seen and unseen. The Lord has brought you out of some situations. Oh, my God, if you get in a situation, go talk to Janet and Jimmy. It's probably not a situation they ain't seen. But God will bring you out. He has brought you out of many situations. Some of them from your own foolish thinking. Thank you for saying amen because, you know, we got to maintain humility, right? Yeah, sometimes we've done some stupid stuff. In fact, just to help out the people that still a little un unsure, those that know that you done made some foolish decisions and God has been faithful and brought you out. Anyway, raise your hand. That's what the, look, two hands and standing up. I see you, bro. Yes, because he's a good God. You know why? Because it's not your goodness that qualifies you for, the, for, for his love. It's because he's chosen to. Is that right, Barbara? That's right. He's a good guy. And as it's, and it's one of my friends would say, you already know. You already know. Right? Let me tell you something you know. You know something that a lot of folk don't know. Lots of unbelievers and even some Christians, they accuse God of not being relevant. They say, you know, how is, how is the Bible relevant for me today in 2021? I'm dealing with stuff that I can't find in Scripture. You know, stuff that is, you know, some of it has been legalized in some states. But y'all still trying to make me feel guilty for smoking, I mean, for doing it. And, you know, but I don't see no Scripture, you know, I don't see where the Bible speaks to my issues. I'm being tempted by things and presented with things that I can't find no scripture that says, thou shalt not buy more than three lotto tickets per. I couldn't find that scripture. So the, the accusation is, is that the Bible is, is, is outdated. God's not relevant. You know, and some have gone so far as to just say, you know, it, it gives you some good morals, but that's about it. I mean, I just, I can't commit my whole self to that. I need something else. Or maybe there is nothing else. I just do what I feel is right in my own eyes. It's like, it's like we, as humanity, have put God on trial. Right? With the accusation. So we've made him the defendant. And we're the plaintiff. As if we expect God to defend himself and build a case for why he is God and why he's not failing because you think that the word of God and the standards of God are not relevant for your life, at least not your whole life. That's why we got to say it primarily unbelievers, but even some Christians, because we'll do some things, but then there are other things that we try to keep as a part of our life, and we justify it because we say, you know, well, the, the Bible didn't say, or God hadn't said, so we justify. Oh, don't get quiet. Keep on saying amen with me like you was when I said God is good and he delivered you from your foolish, you know. Come on, it's the same God. 
Amen? Amen. Amen. Those online, go ahead and type amen in the chat right now. I can't read it, but I, I feel it in the spirit. Somebody need to say amen. It just means it is so. But today, I want to challenge us to, to change our perspective. Let's look at this from another point of view. Instead of asking the question, is God relevant? Maybe we should be asking ourselves, how useful am I to God? Maybe the question is of God's relevance today is not does the Bible speak to my issues and my concerns, but how well, how, how useful am I to God? So let's put your own self on trial. You become the defendant and the plaintiff. And how about we just let God be judge? Because what he says is going to be just, it's going to be right, it's going to be tight, right? It's going, to, it's, going to, it's going to be fair. Because here's the thing. Why, why do I say consider it from that perspective? Because consider this. What if God is actually who he says he is? And he is. If he is, then that means he is the supreme authority. He is the king above all kings, Lord of all lords, ruler of everything. He alone determines, he determines what's fair, what's right, what's acceptable. And because of who he is and who he says he is, one day there's going to be a reckoning. Yeah, there's going to be a reckoning. And that you're going to be called to accountability. Every one of us will. And when that happens, we want to be on the right side of history. We don't want to be on the wrong side. We want to be on the right side so we could be rewarded. We don't want to find ourselves taking a stand for what we thought was right. Because I ain't signed no scripture to say I shouldn't do it. And we live in our life defiant of some of God's standard of holiness. I shouldn't have said some because either it's, the standard is the standard or it's not. So God's standard, right? And then we, we find out that we were, we were in defiance, and so now we're not being rewarded, but we're being punished. It's going to be a reckoning. So let's look at it from the other side just to make sure. And I'm getting to, 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 to the, to the um, specific word that I'm to bring you today. Uh, many people foolishly believe, I say foolishly, believe that they don't have to serve God. You know, when you start thinking about, am I useful to God? Am I a useful servant? Some people don't believe they, that they have to serve God. What I mean when I say serve is it, it, being available for God to include you or to use you in whatever he's doing. Think about that. God using me in whatever he's doing. An all-loving God caring enough about me to include me in whatever he's doing. So now that question is going a little deeper. After we say, am I useful to God, we got to say, well, maybe the question of is God relevant Maybe it's really an issue of, do I know him? And, if, and it, if I do, well, consequently, if I don't, then I don't know what he's doing. I don't know what he's up to. Because when you know God, you have insight into what he's about. You know, you see stuff happening, you go, ooh, that's God. That's God. But if you don't know him, you will see him moving. You will see his impact in your life, and you never recognize it as God. We just take it for granted. And just because we recognize some things don't mean that we see all of it. So don't, don't get too comfortable and say, well, yeah, I recognize that the Lord did this, and he's doing this. But it's some, it may be some more things, and I'm sure there are, that he's doing in your life or in life, period, that we don't even recognize as him because we don't know him well enough. So we have to consider the value of our perspective, 
our point of view. Do we actually know him and know what he's up to? In fact, it's how our perspective has to do with what we see or how we interpret what we see. In, in the book of Jeremiah, um, verse 1, first chapter, verse 11, actually, God asked Jeremiah, what do you see? What do you see? And Jeremiah answered, and, uh, and, and the Lord said, you see well. Because Jeremiah knew the Lord, and he could see what God was doing, uh, accurately respond to the question. Uh, so sometimes I think we need to, to hear God asking us, what do we see? And then let him correct us when, when it's not 2020. Amen. So what we want to do, we want to take another look at a familiar scripture to gain some relevant insight for today. In fact, I want you to say that after me. We're going to take another look. Well, if you're going to say it, I want you to say it loud enough for the folk on, uh, on live stream to hear you. We're going to take another look at a familiar scripture to gain some relevant insight for today. In fact, let's say it together. Let's take another look at a familiar scripture to gain some relevant insight for today. We need to take another look. Okay? Now, as we talk about getting some insight, a relevant insight for today, what is today? What is today? Is, is it merely June, what is this date? June 6th? Oh, 13th. It's the 14th. It's the 13th. Well, whatever day it is, it's the day the Lord has made. Huh? <laughs> Let us be glad and rejoice in it. Oh, I know what got me wrong. On the top of my notes, I have June 6th because that's when the Lord started pouring this into me and I dated it then. I just can't deliver until today. Amen. All right, so it's a lot of moving parts. Today is a, is a time with a lot of moving parts. Man, we, we, we've been experiencing a global pandemic and it's been tough. It's not over yet, but we see some things starting to come back to some kind of normalcy. Um, but things are different. It's a, it's, it's, it's a different time, it's a new season. We gotta do things different. Even in church, right? We used to be able to come and I could observe and if if I observed that people were smiling, if they were greeting each other, if they were attentively listening to the word, if we were passionate in our worship, in our prayer, if seats were filled on the floor and in the balcony, if people came on time, if people were coming up and, 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 re and restoring relationships, asking people for forgiveness for things they've said and done, people going home with each other after church or going to have dinner, inviting guests that come to worship with us to, to have dinner. When you see all those things happening, you get a sense that there's some vibrancy and some life happening. There's some health. There's a healthy environment here. But you can't see the smiles behind the mask. You know, people aren't comfortable with you coming up and touching them. Look what we just had to do with, with, with our dear sister Emily. Our hearts go out to her. But because of the time we're in, because of the, 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 the season that we're in, it's not appropriate to just walk up and put our arms around her and have a few minutes here at the altar before God, embracing and, and telling her we love you and we're praying for you. Uh, stand strong, sister. We're with you. Trust God. You know, we can't even say those things in her ear and be up close and hold. It's a different day. It's a different day. You know, you can't just pop up at the house 
you know, with your, with your bucket of chicken and come in and just sit down and eat half of it, you know. It, those, it's a different day. Things have changed. There's a lot of moving parts. Things have changed in society a lot. You know, now, for the first time in a long time, we're hearing businesses saying, um, uh, we're hiring. In fact, we can't find enough people. And we can't provide all the services we want to provide because we don't have enough people to work. You know, it's a different day. Just a few, maybe a year or so ago, people couldn't, it was hard to find certain jobs. Now they're begging people. You know, just a lot of things have changed. A lot of uh, COVID-related deaths and sicknesses. Family members have had to say goodbye the loved ones and couldn't even be with them when they were transitioning. You know, couldn't have celebration of life services where all the friends and family could come, just have to have a small service with just a few people. It's different. It's a new season. And that's what I came to announce to you today. Not just what you see in the physical, but something has shifted. And God's saying, it's a new season. That's why I waited to this point to tell you the title of my message. The title of my message is, The Useful Servant. Because in this new season, the question God is asking you and I is, how useful are you to me in this new season? Because what you did in the last season won't work now. That old anointing don't transfer. How useful are you to me right now? Can I use you with what I'm doing? Can you be a part of what I'm doing, the Lord says? Are you available to me? Are you in position for me to deploy you? Can I trust you to carry a, the treasure in this season? Because it's changed. Oh, yeah, it's changed. It's changed. So l l very quickly, um, <laughs> according to um, Hebrews uh, chapter 13, it says that Jesus Christ is the same. Come on, you know it. He's the same today. And so even though a lot of things have changed, and there's a lot of moving parts in this season, there's one thing that remains. Amen. He's cons he is who he's always been. So sometimes when the season change and we see that God is the same, if we're looking at it from the wrong perspective, if, we're, if we put him on trial, it's easy to come to the conclusion, Lord, you're outdated now. You know, because, you know, at church, when somebody, you know, is going through, we, we call them to the front, and we come up and we lay hands on them and pray, and you heal. But now you're outdated because we can't touch them no more. Maybe it's not the Lord that's outdated. How useful are you in what he's doing? Because he's the same. He's still the healer. Listen, he's still the one that's rushing to Emily's side. He's still the one that's put his arms around her family during this time. He's doing what he's always done. The question is, how useful are you? I'm just giving that as an example, but I pray that by the Holy Spirit, you will hear him speaking to you and think about the areas of your life where God is doing something and he wants to use you, but are you available to him in this season? So that's what we want to talk about because there's some things that I'm... Um, that we can learn from an example. Um, let's look in Exodus, the 12th chapter, and I'm going to quickly move through this story. Remember, we're looking at a familiar scripture. We're going to take another look at a familiar scripture so we can gain some new insights, right, uh, for today. Exodus chapter 12, verse 12, it says, um, For I will pass through the land of Egypt on that night and will strike the firstborn of the land of Egypt, both man and beast, and against all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. Now the blood shall be a sign for you 
on the houses where you are, and when you see the blood, and when I see the blood, I will pass over you, and the plague shall not be on you to destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. So this day shall be to you a memorial, and you shall keep it as a feast to the Lord throughout your generations. So, you know, I'm sure most of you located where I am in, in, in biblical history, right? This is, this is all the plagues that God had been bringing on, on, on Pharaoh and on Egypt as Moses has been uh, telling him that God said, let my people go. And so now we're down to this plague where the death angel is going to be released and the firstborn is going to be, is going to die. But God gave instructions to the people of Israel, to the Israelites and said, this is what you do. He said, and when I see the blood, I'll pass over you. I'll think about Miss Sarah Doyle. When I see the blood. Y'all don't know nothing about them kind of songs. I can't even, I won't even sing it for you. Just, um, just, just trust. Look at Can't even find no music for that. That's, that's foot stomping, hand clapping. When I see the blood, I will pass over you. Um, so, but then he told him, he said, and, and I want this to be a memorial, you know, which is interesting. God gave it his message because we just got finished celebrating Memorial Day. Pastor just did a couple of messages on memorials. There's something about, uh, everything is coming together right now. It's not a coincidence that pastor's been preaching about memorials. He gave a biblical perspective on memorial. We know that Memorial Day is about appreciating, recon, acknowledging, and recognizing uh, um, those that have given in service, military service, some even to the point of giving their lives. But then pastor gave us a biblical perspective of, of a memorial or memorializing. I won't go through that. You had to go get the message from a couple of weeks ago so you can catch up with that part if you missed it. But it was, it was powerful. And so for God to be saying that, for this holiday to hit right now, and for us to be in the middle of this shift, things start opening up from the p pandemic, from the quarantine, everything's moving. People graduating high school and college, moving to new cities, taking new jobs, you know, pe all kinds of stuff shifting. And God's talking to us about memorializing. So Exodus 13 to the next chapter, look at verse 8. Um, he says, and you should tell your son on, in that day, saying, this is done because of what the Lord did for me when I came up from Egypt. And this should be a sign to you on your hand and as a memorial between your eyes. And the Lord's law may be in your mouth. For with a strong hand, the Lord has brought you out of Egypt. You shall therefore keep this ordinance in its season from year to year. So now we see a connection between seasons, seasons and talking to your children. Are y'all with me? Talking to the next generation. God, there's something about memorializing what God did and being able to tell the next generation especially when seasons change. That's why we have to be aware of what God is doing. It's not just going from, summer, from spring to summer. There's a, shift, there's a shift in the atmosphere. God has changed. You know, the children of Israel, when they were in the wilderness, God gave them a cloud to follow by day and a pillar of fire by night. But God didn't move in a straight line. They will be going one direction and the cloud will turn. He's doing something new. And if you're not paying attention, with, you know, you might keep going in the same direction, doing the same thing you were doing in the last season. But God has shifted. Oh, church, I hope y'all hear me. God has shifted. And there's a, there's a connection between seasons and talking to your children. Thank you so much. Now, now, so let's look a little first so we can see what do you do in this season change? Verse 24 says this, and the people complain. Well, let me, let me move the story along. You know, um, they, 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 they left. The exodus happened, and then they, they, Pharaoh's heart, God hardened his heart, and he began to pursue them, right? And if you didn't read the scriptures, you saw the prince of Egypt, so you know what I'm talking about. And then they got to the Red Sea, and then God performed a miracle, opened the sea, and they went through on dry ground. And then when Pharaoh's army 
you know, his chariots, his horses, and his horsemen follow. Then the, the sea closed. Got, they got swallowed up in the sea. And then um, they began to move in three days' journey into the wilderness. They got thirsty. And it reads in verse 24 of that 13th chapter. And the people complained against Moses saying, what shall we drink? So he cried out to the Lord, and the Lord showed him a tree. And when he cast it into the waters, the waters were made sweet. So there he made a statue, not a uh, statue like Dominique Wilkins in front of the, you know, the arena, but a, a law, an, an ordinance for them. And there he, the Lord, tested them and said, if you diligently, listen to this now, if you diligently, and, and, and to save time, I'm going to count them as I go. If you diligently heed the voice of the Lord, your God, and two, do what is right in his sight, and three, give ear to his commandments, and four, keep all his statutes. Look at what he promised. He said, I will put none of the diseases on you which I have brought on the Egyptians, for I am the Lord who heals you. Now, that could be a whole nother message to go into those four things. I won't do that. But what I want you to take away from it is this, is look at the price that God put on obedience. He already delivered them. He already brought them out. If he didn't do another thing, my gosh, look what he did. If they weren't convinced, they should have been. But then he says, listen, yes, I did all that, but for you to get the more of what I have for you, in this new season, obedience is critical. And so he gave them these four things. Now, I'm, just for the sake of making this point, I'm going to follow these, I'm going to follow this story just a little bit further and let you see just one example. So the journey continues, right? Go to chapter 16, verse 32. And Moses, and Moses said, this God this is God's command. Keep a two-quart jar of it, an omer, for future generations so they can see the bread that I fed you in the wilderness after I brought you out of Egypt. Moses told Aaron, take a jar and fill it with two quarts of manna. Place it before God, keeping it safe for future generations. Aaron did what God commanded Moses. He set it aside before the testimony to preserve it. So, you know, they, they, they were hungry. And, and, and they complained again, and God fed them with manna. But he told them how much they can take each day and not to take more than a certain amount. Um, and, boy, that's a beautiful illustration as well. Uh, that's why I said, Lord, you got to help me today. I got about 30 rabbit trails I can go down. But I'm trying my best to stay right down the middle of this, this lane. I ain't going to waver. So, um, I ain't. <laughs> so God told Moses the command. Moses told Aaron, and the Bible says in verse 34, and Aaron did what? God commanded. Are you seeing what I'm seeing? Now remember, the, remember what God told him. He gave him those four things. I mean, you got to heed, you got to heed my word. You got to obey all my statutes. He told him, these are the things you need to do. He gave him four things. He said, if you do these things, I won't put none of the diseases on you. In other words, you'll be blessed. I got stuff for you, man. I, I have a future for you that's, that'll blow your mind. But your obedience is what positions you to walk into what I have in this next season. Aaron took that thing to heart. God told Moses, this is what I want the people to do. Moses told Aaron. Now, Aaron could have said, well, you know, I wasn't there when God said it. And how we know it's really supposed to be a jar. That's, them jars kind of big, Moses. And you want us to take them and put that in the Ark of the Covenant, put it before the testimony. Is that going to keep? It's going to spoil it. Can you see all the stuff? Can you imagine all the conversation that could have happened? The complaining. But what Aaron did, he did what God commanded Moses and set it aside to preserve it. Okay, I want you to remember that. Aaron's obedience in light of what God said in the previous chapter, that if you do these four things, <coughs> excuse me. So let's, let, let's move on down to chapter 17. 
And I'm going to start at verse 1. I'm going to read a little, a little bit because this is, this, is, this is a big part of the story. Then all the congregation of the children of Israel set out on their journey from the wilderness according to the commandment of the Lord and camped in Rephidim. But there was no water for the people to drink. Again, no water. Therefore, the people contended with Moses and said, give us water that we may drink. So Moses said to them, why don't you contend with me? Why don't you tempt the Lord? And the people thirsted there for water, and the people complained against Moses and said, why have you brought us up out of Egypt to kill us and our children and our livestock with thirst? So Moses cried out to the Lord saying, what shall I do with these people? They are almost ready to stone me. And the Lord said to Moses, go before the people take with you some of the elders of Israel and taking your hand to rod, which you struck the river, and go. He's talking about the Jordan when they crossed over. He said, behold, I will stand before you there on the rock of, in Horeb, and you shall strike the rock, and water will come out of it, and the people may drink. No, that wasn't, that wasn't a Jordan River. Uh, but he said, strike the rock. And the water's going to come out of it. Now, this is about to be pretty amazing, isn't it? They're in a wilderness, no water. Moses is going to strike a rock, and water going to gush out, according to the direction God gave. And Moses did so in the sight of the elders of Israel, so called the name of the place Massa and Meribah, because of the contention of the children of Israel, and because they tempted the Lord, saying, is the Lord among us or not? Now, the reason I included that little piece of the story is because of that question they were asking. Is the Lord among us or not? That's just like what we do today. We're putting God on trial. You know, are, are you relevant or not? I'm looking at all the, the killings, you know, talking about George F Floyd and, and many others, and the question has been, where is God? You know, uh, uh, is the Lord among us or not? Same thing. And so now, look at verse 8. Man, I'm, because of time, I'm not going to read it. I'm just going to tell you. So Amalek came up against the children of Israel to fight. And, jo and, and, and uh, Moses told Joshua, he said, take up some men and you'll go down there and fight. And I'm going to go up on the hill and, and raise the, the rod. When the fighting started, Moses raised the rod. When Moses had it up in the air, the children of Israel prevailed. But his, he got tired, and his hands went down. And when his arms went down, Amalek would prevail. So Aaron, remember Aaron, the one who obeyed with the jar of manna, the one who heard the word from Moses as God gave it and did what God said. He took it. He heard it from the man of God and took it as if God himself said it. He obeyed. And look what happened. Aaron and her, they got a rock and put it under Moses for Moses to sit on and rest on because he was tired. And then they got on both sides and held his hands up to keep him up in the air. And as long as the hands up, they won. And so Israel won that day. But here's the point I want to make. Look how useful Aaron was. Look how useful. Look don't just even look at what he did. Where did the idea come from? You know, I could see some folks like, man, Moses, you need to get your hands back up, man. They're killing us. You know, maybe if you worked out a little bit more, you could keep your hands. I don't know. You know, do you think if you lean over this? No, they, they wasn't trying to blame Moses. Oh, I want y'all to hear me. They wasn't blaming Moses. They wasn't putting God on trial. It wasn't about looking at what's wrong and are you relevant. They looked at themselves and said, how useful can I be? They went and got a rock. It, the scripture don't say Moses said, give me a rock and come hold my hands up. No. They, they knew what they needed to do because God gave them the sensibility to be useful. What positioned them to be useful was their obedience. All right, we're wrapping it up. In the New Testament, mm -hmm. the book of 2 Timothy. Now, let me give you a little bit of background. God, uh, Paul wrote this while he was in prison. This was right after Rome had burned, right? Over half the city had burned, and Nero was, was the ruler. Nero had been losing his mind 
for the last 10, 12 years, he was get degeneratively going down mental illness. I mean, he, he was crazy. I, your history books will tell you some of the stuff Nero did. That boy, he was crazy. He took it out on Christians. Paul got arrested and was put into prison. And instead of Paul being of age, being an elder, an elderly person at that time, he didn't just say, well, I'm just going to just, this is it then. He started writing letters. How can I be a blessing to others? Even while he was in prison. And, okay, let me say it in a different language for today. So Paul's season had changed. He was the, the, the uh, apostle that had been doing all the missionary journeys, going around to all the places, preaching the word of God, you know, and, and just being used mildly of the Lord. But now his season had changed. He had become old. He was in prison, and he wasn't getting out, and he couldn't travel and do what he was doing. He had to shift. How useful can I be to God right here where I am now? I can't do what I used to do, but what can I be doing now, Lord? So, Eden, now let's look at the letter he wrote to Timothy, his son, 2 Timothy, first chapter. Look what he told Timothy. He said, verse 13, hold fast the pattern of sound words which you have heard from me in faith and in love which are in Christ Jesus. That good thing which was committed to you, keep by the Holy Spirit who dwells in us. Keep it by the Holy Spirit. I'm a, that same passage from the Message Bible. Listen. So keep your work. This faith and love rooted in Christ exactly as I set it out for you. It's as sound as the day you first heard it from me. Here's the word. Guard this precious thing placed in your custody by the Holy Spirit who works in us. In the English Standard Version, it reads like this. Follow the pattern of sound words that you have heard from me in faith and in love that are in Christ Jesus by the Holy Spirit who dwells within us, guard the good deposit entrusted in you. In the Amplified, it reads like this. Keep and follow the pattern of sound teaching, doctrine, that you have heard from me in the faith and love which are in Christ Jesus. Guard with greatest care and keep unchanged and the treasure, the precious truth which has been entrusted to you. That is the good news about salvation through personal faith in Christ Jesus, through the help of the Holy Spirit who dwells in us. What you see consistent in each of those versions, it's a little different in each one, but there's something that stands out when you put them all together. Paul, Paul is telling Timothy what I believe the Lord would have me to tell you today in this season, in this change of season. Guard the treasure that's been entrusted to you. By the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost has infused you with something. God says, guard it. You got to guard it. Don't let the enemy come and take it. Let me tell you, part of his strategy during this quarantine was to lull us to sleep. It was to cause us to shut down just like activity got shut down, what the enemy wants is for our walk with God to just mellow out and shut down. How many of y'all felt that pressure? What pressure? The pressure to pray less. The pressure to read less. The pressure to believe less. The pressure to just let one day roll over to the next. I don't have to get up, get dressed. I'm, I'm working from home or I'm not working. I'm just taking this stimulus packet just watching a lot of movies I'm on Netflix. I'm just, I'm vegging out. I'm watching series after series, episode 25, you know, season nine. You know what? We, that's what the enemy wants you to do and just let him come in and sort of slowly strip us. God says, guard it. Guard it. You got to fight for this. You got, if you're going to be useful for me in this next season, you got to guard the treasure that's been placed in you. A little further than 2 Timothy, uh, second chapter, he says, You therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus, and the things that you heard from me among many witnesses, commit these to faithful men who will be able to teach others also. You must therefore endure hardship as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Come on. See, first of all, know that God sees you as soldiers, because we are in a war. 
Somebody better get an amen on that one. We are in a war, and the enemy ain't trying to just uh, shoot uh, some distracting fire. He's after your soul. What we're fighting for is the souls of men. First, your soul, then the souls of men. He said, you got to remember you're a soldier as you guard this treasure, right, and, and, and be a good soldier. And then I love this next one, verse 4. He says, no one engaged in warfare entangles himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who enlisted him as a soldier. Let me tell you something. That's the jumping off point that we need some time to drill down. But the Holy Ghost will help you. But you got to make sure, here's one the way you guard. And that's, this could be a series because <laughs> there's so many ways that we need to guard. But here's one of the ways that I believe God wants me to exhort you in today. Don't get entangled with the affairs of this life. We got to trust God to show us how to be in this world but not of it. We can't let stuff entangle us. Let me tell you, disagreements with people, little uh, scrimmages and snares and, and uh, uh, little uh, uh, bickering and other kind of stuff to get your heart all messed up, you upset, mad at this one, I ain't talking to this one, you know, this ain't working. Yeah, all kind of little stuff going. Listen, baby, we ain't got time for it. We ain't got time for it. As mature saints, as soldiers of the cross, we got we to gotta let that stuff roll off our back. We got to be okay with people putting us down, talking about us, not being your friend, not liking you. Everything been closed down for a year. They had their first barbecue and didn't invite you. Get over it. You got to get over it. Because if you don't, you won't be useful. Oh, my God. See, I know that when the Lord gave me this, I said, Lord, you're talking to a specific person. It's the church, but everybody sitting in the church ain't the church. Who are those people that all they want is to please God? <laughs> they just want their life to please him. Well, listen, if you want your life to be pleasing to God, you cannot get entangled with the affairs of this life. Pray on that one and let the Holy Ghost take you deeper. Because he'll give you some specifics for your life. Verse 5, also if anyone competes in athletics, he is not crowned unless he competes according to the rules. And, and I won't go further on that. Listen, you, you on God's team, you got to be useful. If you on the bench, be ready that when he calls you to go in the game and you got to go guard MB, you got to be ready to bring that defense. You can't, you can't be slack. You know, if you're if you a, sh a, a shooting guard, we down by nine, and you get called into the game, you got to be ready to hit that three-pointer when they give you the ball. I don't care if you've been sitting for two months and ain't got in the game. When your name is called, listen, when God looks around and says, who can I send? Can I find somebody? Who's going to lead worship? Who, who can I find? Let me tell you, I'm closing. I'm going to walk away. Come out here. Listen. I came in this morning, I pulled up, the first person I saw was Reggie. I said, Reggie, man, you are such a blessing. So faithful. Since this assignment was given to you, every Sunday when I come, you on this parking lot, waving, smiling, greeting, parking us, you know, useful. I come in the house, you know, Brother White meet me. He know I'm preaching today. Tell me, can you answer no to these questions? I said, yes. No, 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 no. He said, all right, your temperature all right. You can go. Thank you. <laughs> I may have the microphone outside, but thank you for letting me come in. Useful. I wonder if me coming too close to the speakers made him buzz. You know, Brother Bobby, I said I wasn't going to call names, but oh my God, I just can't. Just appreciate his heart. I'm in the back. We're praying and preparing. He came back looking for a list because I'm going to check people in because he saw a need and was ready to serve. Useful. But let me tell you the beautiful part. When the other people got here who, who assigned to do that, guess what he did? He just shipped it. When I walked into the hallway, I looked. Brother Bobby wasn't at the table checking nobody in. Claudette was there. 
I keep walking. And where is Brother Bobby? He in the sanctuary. Talk about this way, this way. Led me right on up to my seat. Useful. We've shifted. We don't have 10 ushers. We don't even have the same people doing stuff. I see you doing the overhead, working the sound. Brother Jimmy on the soundboard, useful. Can God use you in this new season? See, I'm not talking about an assignment. I'm talking about the condition of your heart. Can God look at you and say, that's mine. I got an anointing for this season. I'm resting on you. We got we to gotta look at some things. I wish I could go deeper. But can you take that part? We got that. We got to guard our heart, and we got to make sure we don't get entangled with the affairs of this life. Hallelujah. Come on, give God praise. Thank you, thank you, Jesus. 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 See, the applause is a way of saying, I receive that, Lord. I receive it. Because when God comes with a word of exhortation, if we hear it, it'll save us. It'll keep us from some stuff. Hallelujah. Bless your name, Jesus. Lord, we love you. We love you with all our heart, oh God. And all we want is to be pleasing to you. Hallelujah. That's all we want. Hallelujah. 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 Put yourself on trial. Assess it right now. Is that what you really want? Are you doing what you need to do to be useful to God? Or are you questioning, is the Lord among us or not? Is God relevant? Does the Bible work in this post-COVID era with all the shifting that's happening? Or are you able to get off of accusing God and look at yourself and say, Lord, am I useful? What am I doing? Help me, oh God. Help me. So I'm not going to ask an invitation in that regard. I'm going to pray for everybody. Those here, those listening online, those uh, in the parking lot, Father, help us. Our prayer, God, is that you would have mercy on us. Help us, Lord, to not accuse you falsely. And help us to see ourselves. And Lord, where we need to change, Lord, give us the grace to do so. We want to be useful to you in this season. Oh God, don't leave us out. Thank you, Lord, for, for uh, choosing us, for saving us, for raising us, for filling us. Thank you for this treasure that you've placed in us by the Holy Spirit. Now help us, Lord, to recognize where the enemy tries to come in, where the attacks are, that we can wisely make the right choices and not get entangled in the affairs of this world. That we can keep ourselves at a place so now that we're ready to be used by you. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. With your head still bowed, if anybody's here and you've not given your heart to the Lord, you know, you recognize that, hey, I've been, I've been doing this thing and walking, this walk, coming to church, you know, being God conscious. But the truth of the matter is, I've really not surrendered all. I want to do like Aaron did. I want to walk in the kind of obedience before God so that all the good stuff God has for me, he can get it to me. I'm in position. But even more than that, that the Lord would say I'm pleasing, that I please him. And if you want to make that commitment, let me see now by just waving your hand. Just wave your hand at me wherever you are. Hallelujah. Amen. I see you. I see you. If you were there once, but you stepped away from it, and you know that somehow during the quarantine you sort of lost some ground, but you want to repent and say, Lord, I'm, 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 I'm getting back in as a soldier. I'm cleaning my weapon. I'm getting back on guard duty, and I'm going to walk with you and you want to be restored, wave your hand at me. In the name of Jesus. 
If you're online and you want to respond to this, please respond in the chat, and we want to get back with you. Hallelujah. And he's doing something fresh. It's a new season. It's a new season. Amen. Amen. Come on, give God praise. Give him glory.